Welcome to the Flip Thinking Podcast. In this podcast, you'll listen to intimate conversations between Bertolt Gunster and his guests. Together, they'll explore the guest's personal problem and try to make it feel lighter or make it disappear altogether. This can be achieved in different ways. Sometimes they can simply solve the problem, but more often than not, they'll find that they have to let go of expectations or views they hold about themselves. At other times, they can only observe the fact that there is a problem without judging it. And in some cases, they can flip-think the problem. Good morning. Good morning. It is morning. It is morning. And it's a Friday in March. Yeah. So tell me, um, who am I facing? Yes. So I've got a difficult Dutch name, Jelle. Jelle. Um, so for for foreigners, Jelle is a quite difficult name to pronounce. Yeah, it either becomes Jelle or Jelly, <laughs> which I kind of find funny because it's the jelly bean, you know, the yeah. sweets. You know. Yeah. But um, so I'm, I'm married. Married? Uh, together with my wife. We have two lovely kids. Aged? Two, uh, ten and six. Yep. We got two cats, seven chickens, no, six chickens because we buried one last week. Uh, yeah, and uh, I live close by. Did the by. chicken have names? Uh, yes, I think this one. Uh, they do have names. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, our kids give them names. I think yeah. this one was Pika. Pika, and it made them in a way sad, I presume? It, yes, we had a burial ceremony. Uh, ah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Part of life, right? Yeah. yeah, life ends with humans, but also with chickens. With yeah. animals, yeah. And yeah. for children, this is something they have to go through, I presume. D- yes. They did. Yes, I was you, had work- a, you had a ceremony, right? We had a ceremony. Yeah, I was working in the garden, and my son comes walking up. Oh, one of the chickens is in the water. I'm like, nah, oh, not good. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> it's <laughs> dead. So uh, I, I, the I son is six or ten. Or six. Six, six yeah. yeah, right. So The I'm, younger one. Yeah. yeah. So we, we dug a hole and uh, uh, put him in there. The I mean, four of you or? Uh, no, just my son and myself. Uh, yeah. My my daughter is kind of scared of everything regarding death. So, I, I But figured, she knew you were doing this together with your son? No, she was not home. Oh. So, But you uh, knew she would be fine if you would inform her mm, afterwards? No, I took oh. a little uh, leap of faith, I guess. Uh. So it didn't turn out very well because she got really angry at me. Not um, being in the moment. Yeah, I wasn't there, yeah. but, but she doesn't like anything dead. So, um, as, as a lot of people exactly. don't like things to be dead. Yeah. But no, this is yeah. a yeah. nice story. Yeah, very nice story. Uh, is yeah. this also the topic why you are here? Or no, it definitely could be. not. No. no, but it's a good story. It's a very good story. It's good yes. story. And Thank touching, you. very moving in a way, too. Yeah, yeah seriously. Yeah. Anyhow, this podcast is about people having problems. Exactly. And uh, so, yeah. this is where my second question is yeah. uh, What's your problem? Yella. 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 So I am really good at procrastinating. You just talk a little bit yeah. less louder now. I know. Yeah. yeah. Is, is, there, is there a little I'm, bit of shame? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Procrastinating. Yeah. What's the problem with procrastinating? Well, it, it, doesn't it make life easy? You were with the chicken, were you? With the chicken. You were a chi- little bit too fast in this. Uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, so I should have, it's not it, always true. I should have procrastinated instead of pro. pro yeah. yeah. Right. With, Before your daughter. Yeah, Anyhow. Yeah. Um, so I think the best question would then to ask to you, yeah. uh, can you give me a situation where you procrastinated, which you shouldn't have done yeah. afterwards, yeah. knowing so? Oh, so many. A lot of examples. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, Give the most painful one. The big thing is that I, uh, in, a, in a business sense, I really want to achieve becoming a professional speaker and trainer, especially the speaker part. You um, want to become a speaker? Yes. Okay. Um, as we just discussed in the, you know, the prequel. Uh, yeah. I, I like Before to be on stage. Taping. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I like to be on stage. It's something where I... I think I belong ever since I was 25 and it was the first time I were asked to do something on stage. Um, it just felt right. This is home. Th- it, this exactly. is where I belong. Yeah. Yeah. It was am, I, a, am I using the right words? Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. This is my space. Exactly. Everybody yeah. looking up at me on stage, listening, you know, like sort of in awe kind of right. moment. And I got uh, you were twenty five at that time. Twenty five yes. standing ovation. Standing ovation. Okay, from my colleagues, about two hundred and fifty people. You've kept the... my attention until now. I know quite brilliantly. I, exactly. And I can. But, f- I, but, I, but, I, but no, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I can, wait. I can feel this quality right now. Okay, well, you can you talk in a captivating way. Yeah, yeah. you do. Um, As an aside, right? Back uh, to you. Yeah. And then, but I was in a stage in my in my career, my life, where I thought I would be a sales manager, sales director. This was my career path. You I, thought so? Yeah. And then oh. people oh. asked me. So when I got off stage, people walked up to me and said, "Holy, yeah, you know, Moses, Moses, whatever." Um, 
you're really good at this. Right. You should do something with right. this. And my response was, what am I supposed to do with this? Because I am in sales. I have another career path exactly. in mind. Exactly. Yeah. And then I'm 46 now, so it's about So you've years waited later. 21 years. Exactly. But now you are here. And now I'm here. And this is something I I deeply feel. I can feel it in my you know in my guts. In my and my heart starts racing when I think about this. Yeah. And I came up with this in my mind super interesting uh, niche about in a business sense how people are not allowed to make mistakes. I think in a in a broader perspective, people think they are not allowed to make mistakes right. because you live in a like a perfect world. Right. Uh, Instagram uh, yeah. needs to be perfect. And what, so if you ask somebody, "How are you doing?" Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm going on vacation. I got a new car. Yeah. Whatever. They're, we it's don't all. make fun about. I do, but and you do maybe. Exactly. But making yeah. mistakes is fun. Exactly. That you can yeah. learn things, and it's hilarious, and yes. that life goes different than you had expected. Exactly. Uh, which is, I think, a, a thrilling part of life because if every I if everything goes according to plan, yes. what's the fun, right? Exactly. I couldn't so this is, you have made a kind of business idea about making mistakes. Exactly. And there's a Dutch name for it. You you told me in the prequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, right? so my, my business name is Foutable with yeah. Bull with O-U, as in, you know, yeah, the same as in Fout, right? Yeah, right. Um, anybody who's not Dutch is not going to understand this. But no. but my LinkedIn title was for about two years, Yellow Road Fuck Up Coach. Um, yeah. And then I got all these questions. Why are you so you have this you have this business concept yeah. about making mistakes? It's all mistakes. about making mistakes in a business context. But you are procrastinating with this business exactly. so philosophy. Every time I have this feeling, this this you know, urge. I feel in my urge, I feel it in my in my in my belly that I really want to do this. And I, I tell myself, I'm I'm going to make work of this. I'm going to really sit down and do the work that needs to be done. And then yeah. I sit down behind my computer, and I open up a PowerPoint or whatever, and nothing comes. Absolutely nothing yeah. comes out Blank. of my Blank. Yes. Yeah. So now I have the assumption that we can try to investigate this in a very light way. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong that this is not about procrastination, but this is about not having a specific plan uh, that you can work on step by step. So I will investigate mm -hmm. that it's not about your psychological uh, debilities, yeah. flaws, yeah, yeah. but it's about uh, lack of uh, planning. This is my assumption. Mm -hmm. I want to investigate this with you. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. So do you have a plan? Um, so, uh, sort of, yeah. Tell me the so, sort of plan. Sort of plan is yeah. I want to write a book about this. Oh, man. And the book is going to help. Yeah. It's uh, such a there's such a lofty goal, a book. I know. I, uh, I've, <laughs> I've written a lot a of books. Yeah. It, it was a hell every time. I know. Okay, so you have this lofty goal to write a book. <laughs> a book. Why? Yeah, uh, okay. Well, yeah. very simple, because the book is going to help me Sale get on sales? stage. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So that's this lofty goal of a book. Yeah. Are there other goals? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the other goals is I want to... Uh, to, have, uh, to have a talk, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I want to. So here's a, uh, another thing that I think it's good to understand is that I once had a very good uh, corporate career. Yeah, you know, I started off as an account manager, ended up as a sales manager, had this beautiful career. Um, driving good cars. Driving good cars. Uh, um, yeah. Um, <laughs> not that good. No, there cars. are a couple, of, a couple people think okay, about, cars. well, that you had a really big mistake with one car, but. Um, This is an aside, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. Off topic. So you had a career. I had a career. And then. Before. Um, uh, it was at an, uh, an American corporate, uh, was it Wall Street company? Right. Almost on a daily basis, we had to forecast how much volume we were going to sell right. the next day. Right. A perfectly undoable job. Um, but it made. A lot of money. Yeah. And you were good at it. And I was pretty good at it, but yeah. I was also sort of unhappy with it. Yeah. And then um, I got a manager and uh, he gave me a job in which I had a few people that I got to manage. And that was kind of when I clicked and thought, hey, this is interesting. I like this more yeah. than the selling of the product I was selling back then. Um, and helping the people in my team become successful gave me much more, you know, happy Got feelings yep. <laughs> uh, than selling the chips I was selling back in the day. Right. And then he, after about a year or so, he said, well, I am thinking about leaving the company in about two years, which gives me time to look for a successor. And you could be it mm. because I think you have what it takes. Yep. He said, well, you have to learn a couple of things. And, you know, me being this career tiger thought about, you know, it's going to be about 
how do you manage yourself in a political environment and uh, second line managing yeah. of people and uh, all these corporate, and all corporate, things. All these corporate everything. things, right? Yeah. And all the things he didn't mean, of course, because he was all about personal development. Right. I was 30 back in the day, so I yeah. had no idea what he was talking about. Yeah. Personal development, what, what is yeah, it? What I is it? No yeah. idea. And then I got a coach, and after two years, which should be the moment I was about to succeed him, um, I decided to quit my job. And because, start, because because I had the realization this was not the kind of environment. This that is not I what would, I want. No, exactly. This is not what I really want. No. So and what you what did you start to do th- at that time? I started a grocery delivery service. Okay. Yeah. Which is a little bit different. It's sort yeah. of different. A company uh, on your own. At the same time, not really. You started this company. Yeah, yeah. I started a company. Yeah. It was before in Holland, Picnic became uh, right. popular, which is a online grocery yeah. uh, service. Very did, successful. Very successful. You couldn't have been successful too because exactly. you were early in then Picnic. We were early in. But the I, but I feel it coming that you quit with this enterprise too, right? Uh, well, it went uh, bank. It went bankrupt. bankrupt. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> even better, right? But even better. Exactly. Making mistakes. Yeah, making What's mistakes. What's wrong? With, we learn, then, right? Um, and in hindsight, of course, it's uh, I can I can totally understand why it didn't mm-hmm. succeed. Um, but a few things hit me because my wife had not left me, my daughter still loved me, uh-huh. and my friends asked, "What are you going to do now?" Right. And I thought it would this would be like the most terrible thing in the world, right? And my company went going bankrupt would be Which the is end of the absolute world. Absolute failure. Exactly. Yeah. And nobody really thought that much of it um it didn't influence your environment exactly at and all. that gave me a different perspective on things on making mistakes and that was like the first little you know drip in a bucket i guess that eventually um so you had if i may intervene so you had this drive of being on stage yeah you you had find your personal uh, place so to say yeah but this is the moment you find your personal message could exactly. you say so yeah so these two are exactly. a nice combination yes but you are procrastinating i presume exactly because, so, so, so what happened then so um i figured uh, this is a story i'd like to tell because every time i would be in talking about somebody about you know what do you do for a living i would you know, talk yeah, about making mistakes. That's uh, my. That's well, my no, life. the thing is, I, the, the, I would I would tell. Well, I used to be an account manager, yeah. sales manager, and then I and started out, my own company. And nobody asked me, "Hey, but how was it to sell chips?" Uh, most people ask me, "Why did your company not succeed?" Because that yeah. was interesting, and I would talk about. They it. were not interested in the success. They were interested in, in the, the failure, failure right? exactly. Which was a new insight for you at Ex- that time. Yes, yeah. very much surprisingly, so. yeah. because you thought if I'm successful driving all these. Quite good, but not that good cars. <laughs> People will admire yeah, me, exactly. but they admire you because of your mistakes. Exactly. They were, yeah. At least they were interested in yes, you, right? Exactly. It was not about admiration, but about, about the, commitment. In, the interest or... Yeah. Uh, Great. Now yeah. we have a guy standing on stage and having a story. So yeah. what happened next? So yeah, what happened next? What happened next? I, 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 had, a, nothing, I had a realization. A, a, li- a little, just a little. Uh, just a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, so I... I, I uh, got online and I looked for a couple of events and I found one and said, hey, I got this story and they were willing to pay me 450 years to tell my story about they were. failure. Yes. Yeah. So I went there. Without having seen you sp- Speak exactly, yeah. yeah, great, yeah, still a good salesman, still a good, too, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. because I'm a yeah. getting money for I'm actually sales. nothing, exactly, yeah. So, and and, and the how, thing, how, the thing how, that how did it evolve? How did it go? It, it, well, here's the thing, yeah, brilliantly, brilliantly, yeah, of course, <laughs> obviously, yeah, <laughs> because I'm not surprised. It was, it was, uh, it was a tech event where um, most people who were speaker would say, hey, I've got this formula. If you do A, B, and C, then you'll be as successful as I am. Or if you do X, Y, Z, then you'll reach this goal or whatever. And of course, it doesn't work that way in life. So, no. And I was there as the only person telling the story about the bankruptcy of our grocery delivery service. And I was supposed to be on main stage. And I got there in the morning and I said, well, we've chosen to, for somebody else to be on main stage. You got the like the little the B show. S- little, yeah, the little side <laughs> yeah. room and uh so the main stage would hold about 300 people. Yeah. And the little stage uh, about 100. If this happens to me and it yeah. happened to me in in the past uh-huh. because I started my career yeah. also as a speaker when I would be confronted with such a situation it would be my challenge to be better than the A stage. I think it would be. It was I, your challenge too. Am abso- I right? Absolutely. absolutely. I'll show them something. I'll exactly. show them they are wrong. Exactly. Um, this, was yeah. it your drive? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. thought so. Yeah. yeah. And did you <laughs> did you shine? I, Were you brilliant? Yes. 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 Uh, without, the, without being arrogant. Yes. 
And yeah. I know also know why. I believe you. And um, it's not about area. It's about it is about reality. Yeah, I just yeah, believe exactly. You. Yeah. So I Nothing had wrong there with were that. about a hundred seats in that in that room, and uh, I would say about seventy five percent was filled, something like that. Yeah. Um, and then while I was doing my talk I know what you're going to say opened. yeah I know what you're going to say I, go, I know what you're going to tell me until there were not enough seats to be One, filled two, and people three, were sti- four, five, take getting chairs in the room exactly. did they did yeah. they yeah, yeah. I, and they I filled all the chairs it very vividly exactly yeah. so and I stood not- there and I had a beautiful powerpoint presentation yeah and I told my story and at the end I realized I did not use the PowerPoint presentation. So uh, I said, oh, well, I, there's this one thing I, w- I would like to, to leave you guys with. And yeah. I went through my slides. And click, 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 click. While I went through all the slides, you heard like, oh, and you hear laughter. More, 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 more. Yeah, because yeah. they kind of relive my story again. Yeah. And uh, that was, I still get goosebumps talking about it because that was the, the like, the, the, the. Um, it's a, it's a, by the way, it's a great theatrical design yeah. to give your story and then summer, summer <laughs> exactly. oh, I forgot, accidentally, I forgot the <laughs> Yeah, quote, Here unquote, it is, yeah. and they can relive it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can, can, this is a good form, formula. Yeah, exactly. Just keep, yeah. Anyhow, anyhow, anyhow yeah, goosebumps well, now while you're talking exactly. because 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 it felt everything fell yeah. into place. Exactly. Yeah, like a puzzle. And then COVID hit. Yeah. And um, how long how long ago was this presentation? Uh, it was the year prior to COVID. Yeah, so not that long ago. Not that long right? ago. Yeah. yeah. Because exactly. don't forget, for the listeners, we mustn't forget this is about procrastination, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I doubt if this is your real problem, but <laughs> we'll get back to that. Exactly. Continue. Yeah. Um, so the story was about my personal failure or my, my company failing, and I told that story. But I also felt there was more behind it than only this. Yeah. It resonated with a lot of people because most people will understand that not everything in life is, is a success. No, to be clear, life ends with death. Exa- yeah. So, like a chicken does, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Aww, yeah. Aww, yeah. yeah. So, striving for success and things to happen is fine, but yeah. we do- must do this. I presume this is my attitude to life. Uh, always uh, with a smile on our face that everything will be temporary. And it isn't, it, life is in a way um, a game. It is fun. It yeah. has a beginning yeah. and it has an ending. Yeah. And if you put too much away into everything, then life will be a burden. Yes. And I think we can connect yeah. on this level. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So back to you. Back to me. Where was I? After co- We are now after COVID. After COVID, yes. Um, so the, um, I felt there was more to this and I also felt... I needed to come up with like a, a solid base of what was happening there, more like a, a scientific approach to the story, what had happened there. Uh-huh. And then um, it all of a sudden hit me that looking back in my career, I had always been very uh, afraid of making mistakes. Mm. Um, and my way oh, of dealing with it now was... slow down because now I see that the business you started has a big message for yourself mm-hmm. to begin with. What is that message according to you? That you are allowed to make mistakes. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this is a path in your life too. Exactly, yeah. 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 So tell me about it. I well, think we are now shifting from procrastination to m- allowing yourself to make mistakes. It, it, uh, exactly. And yes. maybe this, if somebody doesn't allow himself to make or herself to make mistakes, yeah. you have to procrastinate. Why? Because if you don't do things, then nothing goes wrong. Well, this is exactly the thought that was going through my mind. As long as I have all these cool ideas, but I don't do anything with them, the ideas you don't cannot, feel. you know, You can bust. dream about a book. You exactly. can still, you, yeah. can, you can dream about a book, but exactly. if you start writing a book, it can fail. Exactly, yeah. And then you have to come to the conclusion, I can't write a book. Exactly. I'm a loser. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So tell me about you and failures then, because I think we have entered a new topic here. Yeah, well, so, so looking back... In my career, every time I had to to do You're something, talking, you start talking. I, so, I, know, so often. I, know, I know. Everybody's still yeah. listening. It doesn't. It doesn't help. It doesn't help. <laughs> no. They just put the volume a little bit louder, <laughs> and I'll hear you. I am. So, so to start, yeah, uh, continue softly. Yeah, I'll continue <laughs> softly. Uh, no, so the every time I had to do something that I was uh, unsure whether I would be able to do it, right? I would just put more time in it. Yeah. So working at that uh, the American corporate. I started at seven in the morning. I turned on the lights, and eventually uh, the the sh- security guard kicked me out at nine. Oh, you and did. So I'd made fourteen-hour days, uh, five days a week, 
and worked in weekends uh, just to make sure that prepare, it would prepare, never prepare. be my problem that I did not put in enough efforts. Anybody can make mistakes except you. Except me, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So what is it? What is it with you? Thank you for the the example. Yeah. Uh, what is it with you and mistakes then? I have no idea. It's it's give me a really uncomfortable feeling. Can you tell me about the uncomfortable feeling that goes along with you yeah. making a mistake? Well, you just said the word loser and it really resonates with me. Yeah. Um, in previous discussions I had with one of the coaches that I, I, I got to become the successor of my manager, right. he, he sort of gave me the insight that I don't want to be a loser. Mm. Um, and that... I, I, I really remember that moment I got that insight and it, and it still makes me feel uncomfortable thinking about things that I do that are not a success because and then that I, people will see you exactly as a loser. Exactly. Yeah. And here's a really strange concept that I, uh, I want everybody to live like a, um, a really happy, easygoing life. It's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. And I want to show everybody Yeah, that but Jelle, very much Jelle, okay Jelle, without me. This message is meant for you. Yeah, exactly. The message you yeah. want to spread over the world with a book. Yeah, with um, the book. Yeah, and, and the, the first listener that hopefully learns something out of this book is you. Is me. You. J we had just come to the conclusion that uh, you are consuming a lot of time in preventing yourself to From be seen as a loser. As a loser, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So is this is this because you know this co podcast? You know the concept of the podcast. Yeah. You have listened to a lot of episodes, mm -hmm. Dutch ones and English yeah. ones too. So yeah. my next question, I think you can predict, will be: Is there an even more painful word than loser? Yeah. And right now, loser is... It, it's a very it's, painful word. So uh, if you yeah. say no, that's I completely yeah. believe. Is it the most painful word? For now, it is. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Because yeah. nobody wants to be a loser, right? No. How was it with you and in, uh, in, uh, yeah, the family you grew up with and being successful or being a loser or not? Did you get some messages from your parents or peers uh, regarding this yeah. topic? Um, or did you make it up yourself? Which... Uh, I don't. I just don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm open so to whatever answer. If I, uh, I talked to my wife about it, and she said it probably has to do with uh, with your dad. Was he successful? I'd, I'd say he had a he had a his own company. Uh, Did he fail in his own company? Did he went bankrupt? I remember as a as a kid, and I, I don't exactly know how old. Maybe like eight, nine, ten, something like that. The chicken age. Uh, the chicken age. Yeah, a kind of funny chicken. Also, it doesn't mm. feel very good. Um, that he, we were in a car and he said to me, my company might go bankrupt. And there were all these reasons that I didn't understand as a kid. And he said, so what do you think I should do? He asked you. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember saying to him, but dad, you put all this hard work in it. You cannot, you know, you, you, you can let, just it, let go. it go. No. You have to fight for it. Yeah. And he eventually he he mastered. He came. He, he revived. Sold, he, yeah. He, yeah, he survived. And he eventually sold his company at a at a relatively young age. And my parents got to do all these you know cool things. Uh, my sister lives in America. They build a house over there with the earnings of that company. So, so they, they, they became get to travel afterwards the world. relatively uh, successful, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It gives me the good yeah. goosebumps when you tell it when you tell share the story yeah. with me. Um, as a kid, being eight years old and having this image of your father possibly going bankrupt, yeah. this must have been a horrifying experience. And your father asking you, yeah. as an eight-year-old child, looking back what should I do? Yeah. This must have been a devastating question in a way, wasn't it? D yeah. It, in it, a way, right? Yeah. It, 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 well, while you ask the question, I can just feel the emotions. Yeah. What emotions do you feel? Uh, sadness. Uh, yeah, sadness, I think. Or... Uh, maybe the um, feeling feeling for my dad. Because a father should protect you. And at that moment, you had to take the role as if you were his father, exactly. protecting yeah. him. Yeah. And actually telling him, uh, persevere, don't become a loser. Exactly. Be successful oh, wow. in what you do. Yeah, I did not think about it that way. Yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. why we are talking together. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you wow. actually you were driven to prevent your father becoming a loser yeah at a very young age and you have carried it i have the assumption throughout your life that this is a how to be successful not become a loser yeah. persevere take care of your children take care of your wife yeah and then all the good things will happen right yeah but this was your father it wasn't you exactly 
and you had to take too much of a burden uh, at that age. It's too much of a burden. Yeah. A child of eight years old just can't carry no. that weight. But you did. Yeah. But you now can let it go. Yeah. There is no father anymore to who has to be helped. The only one exactly. who has yeah. to be helped yeah. are you, is you is, yourself. Is me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of... There's a silence here. That's, yeah. Definitely. What's happening in the silence? Uh, I like to help other people. And I always thought that was because um, then I don't have to help myself. But I, there's something else here. Um, when I was probably eight, nine, whatever, yeah. um, something in me got touched. Like if I can help, apparently can help other people in this way. I don't know how, but I need to do this. No, I know. I want to intervene here. I think as a child, you didn't have a choice at that time. Yeah. You had to help your father. It wasn't yeah. something you wanted to. You had to. Because if your father would have went bankrupt, which he didn't want to, because yeah. he asked you um, <clears throat> yeah. what I'm going to do now, mm -hmm. this would have been a devastating experience, not only for him, but also for you as yeah. a child, being yeah, dependent yeah. of your father. So what you started to do at that time with your father is trying to help him, support him, um, scaffold him um, to be successful, and yeah. it worked. Yeah. But from then on, I have the assumption that you have created a kind of pattern in yourself. I I have to help other people yeah. to be successful and not to fail uh, because this is how it works in life. In life yeah. I have to help my environment because otherwise there's a kind of irrational danger. Yeah. But you don't have to help your environment. You can just help yourself if yeah. you want to. And if you don't want to, you don't help yourself. Yeah. So you needed other people that if you were able to make them successful, yeah. to persevere, to overcome a failure, mm. then everything would be fine. But you don't have to make this loop anymore. You're now 45, right? Six. For it's, oh, yeah. it's going fast. 46. <laughs> and you can make your own career path. Yeah. You don't need yeah, other, yeah. other people to prove that life can be successful. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, how is it to hear this? Um, my heart's raising, um, and same time very comfortable. Can you elaborate on this? Well, it's, do you have some more words for what you are feeling? Actually, I have a lot of words, but yeah, right now, now I you know. drop that. Yeah, yeah, like the chicken did. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bury you. Yeah, <laughs> but it's uh, it's it's quite emotional, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah, and it, in in um. In a very nice way. Because? Uh, there's uh, calmness. I'm always a very energetic, mm -hmm. uh, loud I speaker. like calmness. Yeah, I think calmness is um, um, collaborate very well with the energy. Yeah. They both need one another. But calmness is yeah. so fine. I have the same feeling now as I had, a totally different example, but um, there was a moment where on Sunday morning, We usually play music in the kitchen. It can be... With the family, right? With the family, yeah. And uh, it can be like happy hardcore or whatever. Uh, why tell me why from Anita Mai. Or the, like, yeah. Which the is a better, great song. Or the worse, the better, right? Why tell me why? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so I put on some music and my daughter says to me, Papa, wait. And she runs upstairs to her bedroom, comes downstairs, and she puts a bracelet around my wrist that she made. And we dance mm. on uh, Kinderen for Kinderen. Yeah, Children uh, for Children, Yeah, which is a Dutch concept, it's, right? It very, very much Children Dutch, singing yeah. for children. And the song is Hier word ik gelukkig van, which this makes me happy. This makes me happy. And it's just like a slow dance about mm. uh, what makes you happy. And we're there. And I have a very intense relationship with my daughter. It's like push and pull. Uh, we're very much alike. And she says to me, now we're married. Oh. And this happens in the morning where I am, uh, I'm about to leave to my NLP master practitioner training mm -hmm. and where we have a talking stick ceremony. Mm -hmm. And so I enter the room and there, all the chairs are in a circle and in the middle is a stick with feathers and little, yeah. little thingies on it. And, uh, and the energy is super low. So I enter the room and I'm, With my high energy yeah. into the room, and I instantly feel there's no place for my high energy right now. Mm. So everybody sits, and it's very silent. And then the trainer says, "So today we're going to do a talking stick ceremony." Who wants to and talk? Who ever, exactly? Who wants to talk? And I'm like, I want to talk. Yeah, and you have and, a story, and I have, t I have a story. I've yeah. got a great story, and I'm sitting there, and at the same time, I feel it's not my time yet to pick up this, 
this talking it's too stick energetic for something. In I know, way, and yeah. then I'm gonna take all the energy. And so I, I felt intuitively, I, ha- I don't, don't pick it up. And then nothing happens for a while. So I realized, then I'll pick it up. And yeah. somebody beats me to the stick, and I'm like, uh, uh, uh. That was my moment. Yeah. And then she hands the stick to somebody else, and and I see the stick go to somebody oh, else. Oh, oh, you no, did. no, 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 my, my, my I stick. Sorry. Yeah. And it goes back and forth to other people. Sharing stories, I presume. Sharing stories. Right? And somebody gets it, and she starts talking, and I knew she's going to give it to me. You knew? After that. I just knew. And she did. And she gave it to me. Yeah. And I asked the trainer, may I put on some music? And he said, no. He said, no. He said, no. Okay. I wanted to do my show. I wanted to do the, you know, play, share play what the you song. have experienced with your daughter. Exactly. And share and let so them I feel had, it. Exactly. Yep. And I had to do it with only words. Yeah. And I did it with silence. And I just, I sat there and I looked uh, amongst the people and I, and I, and I grabbed my bracelet. Right. And I said to the people, this morning, I married my daughter. Uh-huh. And I still get emotional mm-hmm. uh, now when I say it. And, and the energy that day, whatever I did or whoever I talked to was so real. Yeah. So genuine. Genuine. Yeah. I, authentic. I, authentic. Uh, um, and the intensity I had back then is what I ha- feel right now. Yeah. It's the same. So it's a combination of calmness and energy, being alive yeah. and feeling calm at the same time, exactly. right? Exactly, and emotional, and, and it's, yeah. It's so this strange. confirms your ability to speak. Yeah, it does. You did, out of calmness, Yeah. without having to prove that you're not a loser. Exactly. Yeah. So I think we reached a kind of point where we can summarize mm-hmm. That procrastination has nothing to do with making a plan. No. It has nothing to do with that you are somebody who is a procrastinator. Mm-hmm. It has everything to do with your old pattern that you don't want to be a loser. And yeah. if you if there is a possibility to fail, that you have to prepare, prepare, prepare. Yeah. Not because you are procrastinating, because you don't want to fail. Exactly. Which yeah. is the name of your company. Exactly. So yeah. how weird is that? Yeah. So the first customer you have, your first client is yourself. It's myself, yeah. You have just learned your lesson today. It's okay to fail and experience yourself as being a loser because this yeah. is a funny, idiotic experience. Yeah. And just stay calm. And out of this calmness, a lot of energy will evolve. And yeah. I wish you all the luck with your company. Because I'm, I'm, I am... Pretty sure that this is what you really want to do and that you will be in your wheelhouse in flow and completely alive if this is what you'll just continue to do. And yeah. if there will be a book or not, if, or if the book will be good or not, yeah. or what the first matter. steps will be, it all just doesn't matter. Just yeah. follow your uh, drive and uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. That's it. Quite easy. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. And I hope you'll be a loser a lot of times. Because this is f- this is it. Right? How, how does it feel? How does this? How did this last sentence feel? Because I saw some hesitation in your <laughs> in your system. Said no, no, no. Did yeah, yeah, it? No, 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 no. There's um, so make a T-shirt yeah. and put on it. Loser. I am the biggest loser of you all. Well, I got a T-shirt that says "Certified Fouta Bass." Yeah, which is but loser is a better word. Fouta Bass <laughs> is okay, but <laughs> really a loser. loser. I'm a loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. great. And um, I'm I'm really curious to where your career, so to say, career. Yeah. Um, where it will um, yeah. will bring it will bring you. Yeah. It's not me too. It's not you doing a career, but a career doing you. you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is how I think about work. I created yeah. a kind of flip thinking or omdenken or yeah. yes, but in the beginning, uh, but then it created me. I just followed the flow. Yeah. So uh, we'll stay in touch and uh, all the luck for you. And hopefully, will there be a new chicken? I'm pretty sure there will be chicken. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And will you involve your daughter in the process of picking one? Uh, uh, well, we did. And I think that's also why she was so devastated that yeah. it passed away and she didn't get to say goodbye. Right. Uh, so it's a good lesson time. for me for next time. Yeah, but yeah. fathers can make mistakes. Exactly. It won't yeah. make them, uh, you can say the word, it won't loser. make them. <laughs> yeah. exactly. It won't make them a loser. Day. No, 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 no. Okay, well, thank you for being here. It was great. Well, thank I you for having me. Yeah, uh, with all pleasure and love. Thanks. Okay. Hey, Bertolt and Dieter. It's been a couple of weeks since I was in the studio and uh, Bertolt and I had a really good discussion. And looking back and listening back, there are a couple of things that 
that really stuck with me. The first one is that I don't listen very well from time to time. Because I think Bertel had a couple of things he wanted to tell me. And if I listen back, I'm like, Yella, shut up and listen. So that's a good lesson for myself. Um, the other one is, in the meantime, I have had the opportunity to do two keynotes. One was an online version, 15 minutes, like the 15 minute essence of the theory that I have created. And um, what it taught me is that I really don't like to do online things. And second of all, the 15 minute version is way too short. I really don't enjoy it because I don't get to do the things I love to do most. And that's telling stories. And that brings me to my second keynote. That is the one that I envisioned I was going to do. Uh, I did it very recently about two weeks ago and I'm still sort of cloud nine and um, it went so well. I got amazing positive feedback from uh, the company I did it for, the group of people I did it for. Uh, they were super excited. They joined in on the, uh, um, on the interactions I've had. Everything went the way I hoped it would go. It was a definite confirmation of what I know that I want to do, and that is be on the stage. And I enjoyed it so much that I can't wait to do more. So now it's up to me to do more and do the work and you know, call more companies and get more agents to book me. So I am super excited. And at the same time, I'm, I'm very um, anxious, I, I guess, uh, sort of scared. How am I going to do this? I'm going to make it make it happen. But I know one thing. If I can do this, I can definitely do more of it. So um, it got me fired up. And after the podcast, Bertolt showed me the way he prepares for his theater shows. And that was like the last push that I needed to really finalize my script for my keynotes. It made me ask my wife for help when I got stuck to make it better. And it really set me to work. Just rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. And the result was amazing. So I want to say a big thank you to Bertolt for helping me progress, giving me these insights. And I also know that I have to learn or listen just a little bit better when he talks. Do you want to flip think your own problem too? In Bertolt Gunster's bestseller Flip Thinking, you will learn all about the life-changing art of turning problems into opportunities. Flip Thinking is available in England, Italy, Portugal, South Korea, United States, and soon in 17 other countries too. For info, check out flipthinking.info.